So we're going to utilize place training. This is another place that place training is utilizable. Run that back. Hey everybody, Ethan here with Standing Stone and I've got a new video for you that falls into the real life category. That's the kind of stuff that people ask all of the time we get questions like this. Now you're probably thinking or seeing there's been a little bit of a theme with place training videos recently and we want to show more context on how they can help develop a calmer dog and do that very quickly. Let's get started. I'm going to grab Thunder, okay? One of the things that you're going to see or probably have already noticed with your dog is that coming in, getting home from work, new people coming over, all of those changes are very exciting. New things, especially with high energy dogs, they're, they're pumped and they show that through their excitement level being expelled all over the house, right? It's just bubbly, okay? Um, we want to help them to take the edge off and people say, how do I get my dog to stop jumping on company? jumping on me, doing all of these naughty things while they're super excited, okay? First of all, we're going to build better behaviors. We talk about this all the time. It's a conditioning process. It's not a one and done. It takes time and you're gonna have to develop it. So we're going to utilize place training. This is another place that place training is utilizable. Run that back. Now, I'm gonna grab Thunder. This is gonna be his first thing in the house. You're gonna see that level of excitement. I have an e-collar ready. Yes, we utilize e-collars in the house as well. And we'll touch base on another common question about e-collars in the house and when to stop using them in a little bit here. But we're gonna get him ready, get his collar on him. I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And then we're gonna evaluate how quickly he can settle down. And when he settles down, then I will invite him to join me. I'm going to prep a couple things for dinner. You'll get to see how we utilize place training to help make things easier all the way around with everyday life stuff. Okay, let me grab Thunder and I'll be right back. Come on. Good. Come here. Now you can see he's fairly conditioned to this already. <laughs> you were supposed to act sillier. But I'm going to go ahead and throw his collar on him. And good. Come with me. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. So as you see, fairly, fairly excitable dog in general, he's very well behaved in the house and that's because we've been developing this from little puppy on, but he's, you see a little whining, he's definitely very alert, he's very excited, amped about this situation, what's going on, and this is the time period that we're going to allow him to have this place that doesn't have to be applied to being excited and jumping up on the counter, trying to check out what I'm doing. It's just stay put. So I'm gonna go over here and work for a little bit while he calms down. And then um, I have my transmitter here with me and this is a perfect time to talk about this, okay? Do you need to have an e-collar on your dog all the time? The answer to that, short answer, no. No, you do not. But what you need to do is be able to set up your dog for success. So if you're going to have a situation where there's a high distraction or essentially more distraction, utilizing the e-collar to be consistent is helpful. If you don't have the e-collar on your dog, you need to be prepared to follow through with whatever you ask. That's key. So if I didn't have a collar on him and he comes off the dog bed, I still need to be able to say, no, stay put and go get him or help lead him back if he struggles with that. But as you can see already, this the change in his demeanor He's laid down, he's kind of uh, meatloafed up over there. He's a very sweet boy and is doing a really, really good job at understanding the switch. If you get the opportunity to watch any of his training videos, you can see this dude is usually somewhere in the vicinity of about an 11 out of 10, right? Would you believe, go back and watch some of those videos where we're trying to calm him down for his retrieves and some of his other work. This is the same dog, folks. And that is the amount of time that it took for him to settle down, all because of what we've developed through his um, little puppyhood on. When you come in the house, this is our expectation. Now, some things that we like to do is, once that excitement level wears off, um, provide a handful of little rewards here and there. We've done a couple other videos showing this, and these rewards become 
almost a little bit random, if you will, um, that not specific timed things kind of keep a dog guessing. And as long as you keep them guessing and reward them often enough, you continue to get to see that behavior you were looking for more often. So, now you see a little bit of this extra energy start to come up. He's excited for me to come over here. I actually started this video and I said to Kat, I better not put a carrot in my mouth because I'm gonna be here chewing and chewing and chewing. And it's probably picking up wonderful chewing noises. ASMR, we can write that in the description of this one or how, whatever that acronym is. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're gonna go ahead and release him. Now, if we see that exuberant boost of energy come out, bah, he's all over the place. We're saying, no, 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 no. You're not ready yet. Why don't you go lay down for a minute until you calm down? But okay, 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 good, okay. So now he can come over here with me. Come here, bud. Okay, come on. Thunder, yeah. Okay, good. He can come over here, right here. Hey, whoop, there you go. So as I continue to work, he can get an occasional reward. These are carrots, folks. Dogs can eat carrots. There are some things dogs cannot eat. You should check a list. Um, some of them more random than others. And while I continue to work here, I can give him those random rewards for being well behaved. And he would at the same time get corrected if he were to jump up on the counter. If he's gonna jump up on the counter, we're probably in a stage where he's still too amped or too excited. And we need to be showing him how to get rewarded in this situation. Good, good boy. Standing, behaving, that's a good boy, right? So I didn't ask for it. I'm not really 100%. I haven't specifically asked for it, right? And the big thing and the importance of that is this right now, what he's doing and what he's getting rewarded for is essentially his idea, okay? You've probably heard I just exploded seeds all over the place. Um, anything that's his idea is drastically more powerful from a conditioning standpoint, right? He's waiting here. Some may consider this begging, and if this is begging, I'll take it, right? Dog's gonna be attentive to what I'm doing. I know where he's at, but he's being respectful at the same time. So these are all ways that we develop good behaviors with our dogs. That I like a lot. He sat down, he kind of moved away, which is again, an essentially respect type of thing. He took a step back and he's like, this is your space. I'm not gonna get up in it, get up in your business. And this is one of the things that I absolutely love about this boy. I'm excited to continue to do stuff with him because he has such a huge, huge switch from being a super, super powerful dog in the field to this very well-mannered gentleman in the house. I'm gonna try and keep these seeds in here. I'm going to, I think, make some fajitas tonight, peppers, get these cut up. And again, what did you see him just do, right? He sat down there because that's what he got rewarded for last time. Again, his idea. Folks, he's thinking, he's going, what can I do to get rewarded here? And we're showing him all while allowing him to figure it out on his own. So if you incorporate this type of activity with your dog, you're eventually going to get to the point where, no, you don't, you see what he did again, right? Now, I don't have to reward every single one. Um, I can start to ask him to do it a little bit longer. There you go, that's good, right? So before he got rewarded again, heck, I'd feed him half this bag of carrots. It's not gonna hurt him any, um, but it's gonna continue to develop the behaviors that we want. If you can get to this point with your dog through the development stage, and it's not very long, right? Dogs are pretty mature. He's just right at 18 months old, coming up there, year and a half, and we have this level of maturity. A lot of times we hear from folks, hey, um, uh, they're two years old or three years old or something, oh, they still have puppy in them. No, they have a lack of understanding of proper behavior in proper situations. There was a little bit of a, what's up there, but, he knows better, and that's through this development process. 
if he ever becomes rambunctious, or let's say this environment changes. Somebody comes to the door, excitement happens. That's a thing. Then what we would do is be able to very quickly utilize um, our dog bed over there and get him to go back and lay down. Now, I kind of started to say, and I feel like I got a little lost because I'm actually doing more than one thing here. Talked about the usage of an e-collar, and we said we'd really come back to that, and I want to deep dive here. Um, eventually, you are not going to need to use the e-collar in the house at all. The key is to develop the really good behaviors when the dog is young. Now, the key of developing this when they're young is because in the young stage, see how long he's just now sitting here and behaving? In the young stage, that's when they're exploring everything. Everything in their environment is new. And if we allow them to explore everything in their environment, they're gonna learn all kinds of bad things. Bad things like where the garbage is, how to get into the garbage or onto the counters or where you store things or set things or do things. And they figure out what they can get in trouble for, what they cannot get in trouble for. They learn how to do it when you leave the room. You know, so you come in here, then all of a sudden, You've got a dog that's now jumping up on your counters because they've learned the second dad leaves the room, that's my chance because I know I won't get caught. And you kind of saw what he did there, I'm guessing. Uh, he just sat there. He doesn't know any better because we've never allowed him to have the opportunity to learn these naughty habits. Then you end up with a two-year-old dog or a three-year-old dog that is house trained, a perfect good citizen and doesn't know all of this naughty stuff that a lot of times people ask how to fix. We've essentially fixed them by preventing them from being learned. Now, Thunder, you've been a very good sport. You've learned here what the expectation is with me while I'm working on this, and you've shown how a few rewards and allowing the dog to calm down first via place training can help you to develop and build a calmer dog in just minutes. It's simple, it's very, very simple. And we have the ability that if things get amped up here to go back to that dog bed to regain some poise. Utilize this to your advantage, folks. It is going to be a lifesaver, especially if you've got a dog that is rambunctious. You can start all of this training as early as four to five months. If you haven't already seen, Go watch Shock's video or any of our other puppy training series where we show place training and collar conditioning to place training with young dogs. Your dog's ready for this, and I think that your family is too. I'm the guy with the pink gun. This is Thunder. We will both see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.